When you hear the word ammonia, you might think of this, blue glass cleaner, but actually this is mostly water with ammonia gas dissolved in it. Uh, but for some future experiments I have planned, I need the pure ammonia out of this, anhydrous ammonia, meaning uh, ammonia without water. So in this video, I'm going to talk about how to transform this into anhydrous ammonia, and also how to store the product. The material safety data sheet is a little sketchy, but it's likely that this contains about 5% by mass pure ammonia. Uh, and we could use that, and that would work just fine. However, there's other chemicals in here too that might get in the way. So you can also buy this on eBay, and this is actually 30% by mass pure ammonia. So think about that. If you took a third of this entire jug, you could actually extract that liquid and have pure anhydrous liquid ammonia of about a third of this entire jug. So there's quite a lot uh, dissolved in there. The trick is that water loses its ability to uh, hold ammonia as we raise the temperature. So at room temperature, 30% by mass is about as high as we can get. But if we uh, start to boil this, or if we raise the temperature on the, on the way to 100 degrees C, all of the gas will start being emitted. And by the time we reach 100 degrees C, it'll just be pure water and all of the ammonia will have been driven off. The first part of the process is to put the ammonia solution into a vessel where we can easily raise the temperature. Uh, I originally thought about using a sand bath or an oil bath uh, to put this flask in, or you know, what would be even better is a heating mantle, but I don't have any of that. And since the temperatures aren't very high, this flat bottom flask on a standard hot plate worked out just fine. And then I stuck a temperature probe on the outside just to keep an eye on that. And um, since we're going to be raising the temperature up to about 100 C, we're also going to be getting a lot of water vapor off of this. And the problem is that we don't want that water vapor in our ammonia gas. As this thing bubbles, we'll be getting both off, and we want to separate out the ammonia from the water vapor. So the next stage is to put a condenser on top of the flask. And here I just have very cold water at about 5 degrees C running through the coil. So as the water vapor uh, drifts upward through the condenser, it uh, condenses on the coils and drips back down. It refluxes back into the flask, whereas the ammonia gas that's been liberated from the solution continues upward through the apparatus. I've used these Keck clamps to hold together the apparatus, but there's a plug at the top here that purposefully doesn't have a clamp. This is so that if the pressure increases um, high enough, it will just push this cork upward and vent the ammonia out, instead of exploding the glassware and spraying ammonia everywhere. Uh, which reminds me, you'd, you'd have to be totally nuts not to do this in a fume hood. I used silicone grease on all of the ground glass seals to make sure that everything was gas tight. So at this point in the system we have um, fairly dry ammonia gas, but there's still a fair bit of water vapor mixed in. And we'd like to remove that so that when we um, compress or, or chill our ammonia gas into a liquid, we don't have lots of water contamination. So what we want to do is pass this through a column of substance that will absorb the water. Basically it's a desiccant or a dehydrator. And um, if you go to a hardware store, you'll find a product called Damp Rid which you can't use for this application because Damprid is actually calcium chloride and that would react with the ammonia gas. I think silica gel also would actually react, although I, I couldn't come up with a definitive answer for that for, uh, from my research. However, there is a desiccant that works great and that is um, sodium hydroxide or lye, 100% lye. Uh, potassium hydroxide would be even better, but uh, that's harder to find. This stuff you can get at the hardware store. So I have this glass column, and at the tip here I've put some glass wool just to keep the, the uh, granules of sodium hydroxide from slipping through. And then I dumped in, you know, about a handful, just the, the amount is not too critical, of, uh, of sodium hydroxide. And as the gas sort of diffuses through these NaOH pellets, the water will be absorbed and the ammonia will pass right through. So at this stage in the system we have fairly dry ammonia gas at just over one atmosphere of pressure. In order to store that gas, we either have to compress it using a, you know, a mechanical compressor, or we could chill it to the point where it condenses into a liquid, and then we could pour the liquid into a vessel, and that's, that's the route that I chose to use. This piece of equipment is a cryogenic freezer. It has a well that's filled with alcohol in here, and uh, when it's running, it can get all the way down to negative 100 degrees C. So my plan, originally, was to get a small round bottom flask and get this 
uh, hose adapter and then connect this hose up to the uh, ammonia stream coming out of the glassware that we just saw and then put this down into the cold trap so that as the ammonia gas went into the flask it would condense in here and I'd end up with a full flask of liquid ammonia. This ended up not working uh, probably because the thermal transfer through the glass wasn't very good and also uh, when the system starts up there's a lot of air that has to be purged out of all that glassware and so you have to sit there for a long time with with this system open so that to get the air out and meanwhile there's you know tons of ammonia vapor coming coming out as well so ideally we would have um, a condenser set up just like above the boiling flask where there's like a cold liquid flowing through and then as the ammonia drifts through it condenses on those coils so for a while I thought well maybe I could do like a submersible pump in here that would pump the cryogen up into a, a coil and then the thing would drip down this that and the, pump is a problem and priming it and the rubbers freeze and all that kind of stuff. So eventually I came up with this system. This is a stainless steel piece of uh, apparatus. In fact, it was originally a nitrogen purification cartridge. This is what the top of it looked like, nitrogen purification. Now this wasn't a nitrogen separation membrane. This thing requires that your gas already be 99% pure and then this will take you up to 99.999 or whatever. And it was already spent. So I cut it up and wanted it just for the fittings and the fact that it was made of stainless steel. All of the fittings are stainless, including the sealing uh, ferrule that's inside there. And I bent the tube around so that when this thing sits down into the cold, uh, the cold uh, alcohol in there, the ammonia will have more than enough chance to condense and it will flow up in here as a liquid and then this thing will you know hold all the liquid until I'm ready to put it in the storage container. And this ended up working quite well. The storage tank for the anhydrous ammonia must have all steel or stainless steel construction because the ammonia will corrode brass and other copper containing alloys. The tank must also be about, you know, this big to hold the quantity that I needed and also have a small enough diameter to fit down into the cryogenic freezer and must also have a working pressure of a few hundred PSI. So this tank is pretty much perfect. This is a liquid propane tank that you can get at the store for just a few dollars, really. And I set about converting it for use with ammonia. I used a really coarse screw to yank out this plastic collar that's on the inside of the neck and then used a uh, Schrader valve tool to remove both the uh, main valve that's in the, the neck of the cylinder and also the safety relief valve. I found a 1 to 3 8 pipe fitting that uh, had an outer diameter almost exactly the same as the propane cylinder neck and I TIG welded this on. After the weld was cool, I hooked up the cylinder to a pressure manifold and then used an old refrigeration compressor to just pump air into the cylinder as a pressure test. And one thing that I found interesting is that the safety valve doesn't have a hard stop. It's not like you screw in the safety valve and it has a preset pressure. It actually, the, the set pressure goes up as you screw the valve in further and further and there's no definitive stop in there, which I found kind of weird. So I used my uh, AC, this high pressure gauge on the AC manifold to check the pressure while I screwed the valve in further and set it to a uh, relief pressure of just over 300 PSI. So here's the whole system running. We've got the ammonia solution bubbling away. We've got the cold water circulating and condensing the water vapor, which we don't want. And then the gas, the ammonia being dried and passing down into the cryogenic freezer where it's being liquefied. And then every half hour or so, my little stainless condenser would be filled up and I would manually tip it out and pour the ammonia into the storage container. And I, I had to remove the um, emergency expansion valve off of the container to, to provide a vent path. The neck is still very small diameter inside there and so even using a funnel, uh, the boiling vapor would just cause the ammonia to splatter everywhere. And if you're wondering, yes, the smell was terrible. In fact, the, the vapor that this thing puts off is, um, you know, <laughs> ridiculously strong, actually. And I did, in fact, use this when I was doing the ammonia transfers. Uh, I really couldn't endorse it since this is kind of more of a, you know, a novelty almost at this point. It's, it is actually a real gas mask, but this cartridge is old. However, despite all of that, uh, using this made it such that I could almost not even smell the ammonia inside the mask. So I was um, very happy to have this today.
Another problem I had is that the cryogenic freezer has only an on-off switch. It's meant as a cold trap device, and as soon as you switch it on, it tries to get down to negative 100 C as quickly as it can. However, the melting point of ammonia is negative 78 C, so if the cold trap got all the way down to negative 100, instead of condensing, it would actually freeze the ammonia solid. And I actually found this out the hard way too. So in that uh, narrow passageway, at the bottom of the condenser, this, this will become solid ammonia and then nothing passes through and the system pressure builds up until that glass cork pops off and sprays ammonia out. Um, so I, I don't have a temperature controller for this, so I was just switching the freezer on and off manually. Anyway, after getting all these kinks worked out, uh, after about half a day today, I built up quite a bit of liquid ammonia and I took the uh, storage container out of the freezer and screwed in uh, this steel valve so that now the thing you can hear the liquid sloshing around in there but now I can control it very easily through this steel needle valve. Here's an interesting demonstration we can do with some of the anhydrous ammonia that I just created. So I have a beaker filled with some of the chilled alcohol, and then inside the test tube is the anhydrous ammonia. And I have a little stir bar sitting at the bottom there, and this whole thing is on a stir plate. And the idea with using this uh, beaker of cold ammonia, or cold uh, alcohol, is just to give this more thermal mass so that the ammonia doesn't boil away. So I'll start the stir bar spinning a little bit. And to it, I'm going to add lithium metal. I just put in a flake about this size. Let's do another one. And you can hear a slight amount of boiling right as the uh, lithium goes in and hits the cold ammonia. This is called the birch reduction and the color actually comes from free solvated electrons. So what you're looking at is uh, an extremely good electrical conductor because it has free electrons. As you can see, after I add more lithium metal, the solution changes from a dark blue color to this very metallic bronze color. It's really a beautiful color. Ammonia gas is technically flammable, but not really. I hooked it up to my manifold and made a primitive torch and then sprayed pure ammonia over an alcohol flame. Um, as you can see, it actually puts the flame out. It's, it doesn't catch at all in that sort of circumstance. So I decided to up the ante and I mixed the ammonia with pure oxygen and then shot that out of the makeshift torch. And as you can see, it still doesn't even sustain a flame. Um, I tried different mixtures. I probably could have uh, dialed it in a little bit more carefully. But needless to say, it's not really much of a uh, fire hazard since it's just so difficult to get started. I believe the ignition temperature is even higher than the flame temperature, which, you know, it means it doesn't self-sustain. Okay, stay tuned to see what I have planned next for this. See you next time. Bye.